This is a MacBook Pro M3 chip A2918 screen replacement guide. And I'm going to show you guys how to do the self-service repair where you order the part from Apple and do the repair yourself. So first grab a 4PL screwdriver and unscrew all the screws on the bottom. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments below if you have any questions. I left some color coded screws so make it a lot easier for you guys to skip forward. Next, grab your metal pry tool and then you'll work your way on the bottom, be able to get your hands underneath it. Then you will take the metal pry tool on the little clips on the edges and give it a good twist and you'll hear a pop. And then you can just grab it and slide it downwards and get the bottom case off. All right, we got it off. There's the true beauty of the M3 chip. Now let's get the battery disconnected. Grab your plastic spudger and do a twist motion right here on the top to pull the lever and then grab a little piece of tape and slide out the connector just like so. If the tape rips off, you can grab tweezers to slide it out. It's not fully disconnected yet. You're going to have to grab your T3 screwdriver and unscrew the trackpad connection to get to the battery connection and fully disconnect it. Now disconnect the trackpad connection and you'll pull the battery flex cable up a little bit and then you'll be able to get to this T5 screw and unscrew that to fully disconnect the battery. Grab a T3 screwdriver and unscrew the screws holding down the Wi-Fi antenna connections. Use bended tweezers to disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas just like so. Otherwise, you could end up breaking something. Be very careful with this part. Use your T3 screwdriver to unscrew the bracket holding the lid angle sensor connection down. Continue using your T3 screwdriver and unscrew the screws holding down the brackets that uh, have your screen and camera connections. Grab out your plastic spudger and disconnect the screen connection and the camera connection and the light that goes with the camera and then the lid angle sensor. You're going to have to replace the lid ang angle sensor when you use the Apple service program part. Use a T5 screwdriver to remove all these screws holding down the Wi-Fi antenna. Use your T5 screwdriver to unscrew the hinge covers. Now grab your Penelope 2 screwdriver and unscrew the nine screws holding down the Wi-Fi antenna. After you unscrewed all the screws, you can grab out the Wi-Fi antenna just like that. And then you can grab off the hinge covers. You'll grab your Penelope 2 screwdriver, unscrew the lid angle sensor off the screen before removing the screen. Now grab the screen ribbon cables with your hand and move the bracket backwards just like so. And then grab the little piece of plastic out from underneath it after you remove the bracket. It clips in. They're very hard to put back on. Grab your T8 screwdriver, unscrew the six screws on the hinges. You'll actually just unscrew two of them on each side and leave one left for the final part when we remove the screen. I do recommend loosening it before you fully um, open it up and take it off. And I'll show you how to take off the screen in just a second. So we'll open it up. Put it on its side and we still have a remaining a remaining screw that we have to unscrew um, from it while it's tipped on its side. So you'll have to hold it up at an angle and unscrew it and then hold it with your hand. But the screen's already broken, so we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. But once you got that off, then you have to lift it up and kind of slide it down it, and uh, slide it down and then you lift it off. So it's a little bit difficult, but once you do it one time, then you know how to do it for the rest of the time. 
Perfect. Now we got the screen off. We'll go grab our uh, new part. Uh, the screen I bought was from the Apple self-service repair program. You have to program the part after you do the repair. So we'll tip it up on its side, make sure the ribbon cables aren't snagged anywhere. And then we'll make sure we screw down just one T8 screw on each side of the hinges. And then we'll be able to shut it and start screwing it all back together. All right, I'm gonna just speed it up here, speed up putting it back together. It's just a long process, just put it back together the way you took it apart. Um, I did wanna talk about the ribbon cables, connecting them. Um, just be very careful with it and be patient because they're really hard to connect. And I'll go over that when we get to that part of the video. I did wanna ask you guys to please like and subscribe for more guides just like this one and check out my other videos. Please share this video. I would like to get this video to 10,000 views in less than a year. Can we do it? We can do it. All right. Well, we're just gonna grab our uh, P2 screwdriver and put in the lid angle sensor here. And um, it's not magnetized, so it is really hard and try not to lose it. If you lose the screw, I don't know if you can replace it. You'll just have to get some sort of screw that can fit that spot. All right, um, so we'll connect that on and then we will just continue on putting this thing back together. There was at the end of the video, I do show how to pair, part pair the part when you get that part from the Apple service program. If you don't get the part from the Apple self-service program, you're gonna end up with the screen artifact, which is kind of like a watermark on the screen on the top. And all your screen color will be like off and it will have like a weird sort of like interface on the screen. Just so you know, you have to program the part and you have to use the lid angle sensor that comes with the screen when you do this repair. After you get the ribbon connectors connected for the screen and the camera connection, you'll want to screw it down right away because these things will pop off and they're so finicky and so hard to put on. You'll really want to take your time. So you just want to follow my video and take your time putting these connectors on because you don't want to bend it up and then cause yourself to break the part or even break the logic board FPC connector on the board and then you'll have yourself in quite a pickle as you can see i'm taking my time trying to connect the connector just making sure it's right aligned you can really just feel it connect you know when it connected when you feel it and you don't want to put a ton of pressure down because you don't want to break it all right so then we'll just screw this down quick and then we'll grab the rest of the um parts and start putting them back in just like the hinge cover you'll want to put the hinge covers in first and then you'll want to grab your wi-fi antenna and put it over top of the hinge covers and then just start getting everything screwed back together
to get it turned on, you'll have to plug it in and then you're going to open it up and just hold the power button on until it brings up the startup options. I had to re-click it and click and hold and brought me to the startup options. Once you get to the startup options, you hold command and D down until it brings you into diagnosis mode. And then you're able to program the part. You'll have to connect it to Wi-Fi and then you'll um, be able to program the part and Apple will verify that you have an Apple OEM part. It's very important that you don't go through autopilot and just do the setup. You want to make sure you read everything before you do it. Like you shut the lid for 20 seconds and then you open it up. I waited a little longer than 20 seconds and then it made me go back and um, do the diagnosis thing with um, the screen. And it did it after I did this lid angle sensor part. So you have to do that part first and then you'll program the screen. And you'll have to replace the lid angle sensor. Otherwise you'll have a screen artifact. The part is paired to the screen. After you did the lid sensor, you'll pair the screen and you'll run it in offline mode. If you run into any issues, you'll have to contact Apple on their support page for the self-service and you'll have to contact them directly and leaving a comment below isn't going to help that. But if you want to leave a comment below, if you had any other questions, I'll leave all the tools and parts and everything in my description along with timestamps. Thank you for watching everyone and I'll show you guys I paired the part, it doesn't have an artifact, and we'll show you as it boots up here on the home screen. You can see on the top, there is no artifact, and it looks brand new. And it still will have the Apple Care warranty since I use their part.